The great thing about this car is all you have to do is click the gear select to the left and it goes into sport mode. Sport mode. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Supercars of London and a slightly different video to the daily vlogs that I've been producing recently. As you may or may not know, I have been driving around in the BMW i8, the 2014 BMW i8 given to me by BMW Sterling Way in Boreham Wood. And firstly, I just have to say this is the most futuristic car, I think, on the road today. It looks utterly insane from the wheel design to the way that the doors go up, the wing mirrors, super curvy, and the two-tone blue and bla black. As you get round to the back, you've got these weird wind intakes that basically move around the car, and from the rear, this car is absolutely amazing. Cue all of the jokes to say this car looks like it's giving birth to a Porsche 911 from behind. If you haven't heard that joke before, look around the black and just the blue and it looks like a Porsche is coming out <laughs> of the back. Rather than give you all of the statistics to do with this car, like most of the car reviews, I want to give you an insight into what this car is like to drive. The amount of people that have come up to me in the street, in London, whilst driving, asking me what this car is like to drive. I thought that I'd make this first drive or first impressions video so that you guys get to understand what goes into starting this car, what goes into the main sort of features and technological aspects of this car to do with how the electric mode runs, but also how the petrol engine runs. This car is filled with technology from cameras all around the car to make your reversing a lot easier, but also just how intelligent it is and when it turns from petrol to electric. So let's jump in. I will show you a few features of how you start this car up so that you guys, when you get in your i8, you know how to drive this car because it is super easy. Now I think I have been given the spare key because I'm pretty sure the i8 key is super cool but as you can see we have got many buttons. This is the unlock button at the top, the lock button which if I do now it will automatically do the windows up but also fold the wing mirrors and then this has got the boot space. Let's have a look at the boot space and show you how useless it is. So this is all you get but these are the two connectors to charge the electricity in the car but the great thing about this car is you don't actually need to charge the electricity unlike the i3. So this car has got a super futuristic design and if you look in here whether you can see that you've got the little clicky thing here that opens the door outwards like that and you immediately get the carbon fiber reinforced plastic as you see in the BMW i3 here and you are welcomed by probably the most futuristic designed interior as well. The lines that sweep across this are utterly amazing. You've got the center console here that just looks like it's out of a spaceship. The amazing thing that you may have seen on my Instagram is this interior illuminates like the blue at nighttime, which is amazing. It's honestly amazing. One of my favorite features is the blue seat belts to match the exterior of the car. And when I actually picked this car up, I didn't realize this is this is how ignorant I was to the BMW i8. It is a four seater car and we have fitted adults in the back of this car, including one six foot man under the name of Harry Medway Smith, who is a London supercar spotter. So it is definitely a four seater. I took my girlfriend and mum out in it yesterday and it makes it a lot more practical and a lot more usable to drive on a day to day basis. Yes. Edition 1 C63S, absolutely lovely. Now, I was just about to jump in there, but I've got one more thing that I need to talk about. The height of the door sill here. The seat sits so much lower than the actual door sill, it makes it quite difficult to get in and out. But it's absolutely fine for males, because you can just literally slide in like that and knock your head at the same time. But if you're female, this is the view that you're gonna have trying to get out of the car. Now, if you're in a skirt, then it's probably not the best thing to do. But as you sit in the car, you are greeted with a beautiful steering wheel with this cool little design that shapes the uh, steering wheel. You've got all of these features down here. These are to do with parking sensors. This sorts out the camera. 
These are the different modes between Comfort and Eco Pro, which is very sort of more efficient. Traction off, E-Drive, start, stop. You've got the gear select here, electric parking brake. Your whole sort of multimedia thing that comes up here is all controlled here. You've got a nice little storage space there and also another one there, but it's not actually that big. Three cup holders, two for the back, one for the front, very German. And then this, unfortunately, is probably my least favorite bit of the car. It's very BMW. I don't like these sort of 1990s look buttons. And a little bit of strength. And it comes down. And this is the view you get in the wing mirror that I have been banging on about. It is so futuristic and so cool that I just never get bored of looking in my wing mirrors, which is a good safety feature, I think. But the one thing that I would have to say is if you can see this bit here, this is not a... well. This whole bit of the wing mirror gets reflected by the mirror, but this bit here never changes. But this reflection, I will try and get this on camera, it'd be near impossible to do. This bit always flickers and moves like a reflection should, but this bit never does because it is reflecting on this black corner there. It always looks like a car is in your blind spot. It is probably the only nickel that I have to do with the, the visibility of this car because it's the weirdest feeling ever driving along and always thinking you've got a car in your wing mirror just about to go into your blind spot when really it's just reflected on the extended pointy tip of the wing mirror. You might be able to see the heads up display here, featured here, it tells you what the speed limit is on the road and it also tells you the mile an hour you're doing. And because we're in drive, even though you can't hear anything, we can actually pull away in electric mode and no one would know. No neighbours would hear you leave or return because as soon as you put this car into reverse, it switches to electric mode. But as you can see, this car is super silent and very eerie if you're not used to electric cars. So now what is left for me to do, now that I've set the camera up, is to put it back into drive and do exactly the same manoeuvre as I did last time. The really intelligent part of this car is when it decides to go into electric mode or when it goes into petrol mode and it does change on the speed and town driving. This car is designed to be very fuel efficient and green in the city and I think that is also helped with how light the steering is. It's one of the main things that I felt when I first got into this car is how light the steering was, but also how easy it is to drive. You take your foot off the brake and it lurches forward, unlike the BMW i3, which is its younger brother or sibling or something like that. Within the first few miles of driving this car, I realized that one, you can just pootle around like an everyday car. You can pootle around like an i3. You sit a lot lower and the seats are a lot more huggy, which is really, really nice. And the one favorite bit is how high the center console is. And I think that comes with a lot of supercars, especially the Lamborghini Gallardo. The, the center console on this bit is really high and makes a really nice armrest. And unlike the R8, you don't actually have to compromise using one of your cup holders to use it as an armrest. If you remember, my cup holders in the R8 were right down the middle. You either use them as cup holders or you used it as an armrest. You couldn't use it, but this has a cup holder and isn't compromised when I put my arm there. So I'm sure for those tuning into Supercars of London, expecting Army Tricks exhaust, expecting loud noises for me to be pootling around in an electric mode of BMW i8. The great thing about this car is all you have to do is click the gear select to the left and it goes into sport modes sport mode <laughs> anyway the dials which are currently blue and gray turn red everything's turns red and you are officially in sport mode which we will get to in a bit i'll tell you what however whilst we're heading down to the petrol station let's bang it into sport mode so did you hear that now i'm in sport mode everything turns red here and it just livens everything up. The steering is still quite light, but at the same time, you can feel that it's just stiffened up a little bit and you just get instant power. And I'll tell you what, this car is very, very quick. Now, a question that might pop up in this, talking about the sound of the car, is that yes, you can get an exhaust system for it. I have YouTube. Uh, BMW i8 exhaust systems and there is a titanium exhaust system that sounds amazing. The 
one thing, the one little niggle that I have about the sound of this car, as you might be able to tell, is that it's played through the interior speakers of the car. And I've picked that up, I actually haven't had this confirmed, I'm guessing. So BMW, I apologize if it doesn't actually do that and this is all authentic engine noise. But I feel like it's playing from the inside of this car. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but it feels like it's coming from the inside, which isn't a bad thing because it makes it sound really, really cool from the inside. I'm going now. And it sounds great on the upshifts as well. And I think from the outside, after watching Shmi 150's video, with which we did the collaboration a couple of days ago, this car does sound good and it looks amazing from the outside, but look at that. It just takes off. And before you know it, you have to put your foot on the brake just to sort of calm yourself down because this car is really fast. And on the paddles, this car is really, really good. It also is quite selective as to when you want to be in a gear. Like right now, if I go to third, I want to go to third. It tries third. I'm in second gear now. It goes to three and then back to two. So you have to accelerate a little bit before it actually selects third for you, which is a little bit annoying. Um, it doesn't let you drive completely how you want it to. But again, this car is an automatic, so kind of want to, you'd expect that. You might not even want the paddles if you buy this car. You might never use the paddles, but me being me, I use the paddles. One thing that I completely forgot about was talking about the looks of this car and how it makes people feel that see it. I have seen so many drawers hit the floor when people have seen this car. So many people have commented, what a cool car. So many people ask what it's like to drive because it just looks so futuristic. I don't think people understand that it is just a normal car. People probably think that you use a joystick and a hovercraft machine to power this car, but no, it's got a steering wheel, it's got gears, it is a normal car. And I think that's what the majority of the people that look at this car can't get their head around. It is just a normal, but very, very special car. It is definitely up there with one of my most favorite cars that I've ever driven. But you'd probably expect that because I haven't actually driven that many cool cars. An R8 V10 Spider, R8 V8, 458, uh, uh, LP560, this, and an Aston Martin DBS. And this is definitely up there as one of the coolest cars that I've ever driven. The biggest wow in this car for me is the practicality and usability of this car every single day. I love the fact that I had my Audi R8 V8. I love that car. But at the same time with the Armitrix exhaust system, it wasn't the best daily. I thought that it was a really good daily until I've driven cars like this, but also the V10 Spider. It felt like there was a split personality in that car where you could use it every single day as an A3, but then turn it into a track focused absolute animal. The technology in this car, the cameras, the reversing camera, the cameras underneath the wing mirror and the front that gives you a bird's eye point of view of this car and you can watch yourself driving along like Grand Theft Auto in the olden days. Um, but this car then moves into the sporty little car when you... See, even that caught me off guard a bit, the way that it just accelerated from the line. Just the the synchronization of the electricity and the fuel in this car just makes this car an animal. But it's so good at handling as well. And it's just the way that BMW have engineered the steering to be that slightly little bit lighter on the slower speeds when you're driving around town and definitely when you're in e-drive, it just becomes like a, a Fiat 500. But then when you really want to go for it, it just steers like an absolute dream. I'd love to take this car out on a track. And um, it's just, it, this car enables you to keep to the speed limits even round a roundabout. Now that is something that not many cars can do, but the way this car handles and the, how flat it is around corners, there's no sort of wobbly sp suspension or anything like that. In sport mode, it really hardens up and becomes a supercar rival. That is the best way to describe it. It is a practical four-seater concept car. And who doesn't want to own a concept car? This car seems really robust in the sense of how 
much you can have fun in this car, how much you can thrash it around a little bit around the corners, put your foot down in the straights. And because it's a BMW, you have that German reliability of, that you know it's actually been put together properly and all of the wires have been connected properly. Whereas in the Italian cars, yeah. I'm not so convinced the reliability of Italian cars is as good as the German cars. Straight. Awesome. This car looks awesome. The doors are awesome. The way this car performs is awesome. How's that for a review? I think I nailed it. I think I nailed it with just one word, awesome. I love how this car looks. I remember seeing this car get launched at the motor show and was like, BMW are making that car. And I can imagine the mass audience that saw the BMW i8 for the first time at the motor show thought that it was a concept car. Didn't think that it was actually gonna be seen on the road. And that's maybe why people's jaws are on the floor when I drive past because they're like, that's the car I saw at the motor show and that's the concept car. What, what they, what's it doing on the road? And I think that's where people sort of really get gobsmacked as seeing this car be like, hold on a minute, wait, what? Is that the car that we saw? That's, I think that's, that's where it is. Um, and I think, uh, well, hopefully I've nailed it, nailed it, because even in London, the i8 gets so many looks. I see a lot of i8s in London, and I would always look, but I tend not to film because it doesn't have a big, naturally aspirated, or even a twin turbo engine. It doesn't sound as cool as the Lamborghinis, the Ferraris, and um, the higher end, even the McLarens. The McLarens sound cooler than this. So, it's a weird one, but I still look at them. I still look at them and go, that, that, is that really on the road in 2015? It looks like it's a 2020 car. It's so sad that I'm actually driving and only about two or three miles away from BMW um, Sterling Way before I have to drop this car off. <sighs> I'm very early as well, I'm very early. Thank you BMW Sterling Way for allowing me to drive your BMW IA and organizing the insurance so that it was possible and also legal. Because I know a lot of people were asking how I've been able to do this um, being as I'm under 25, but the insurance was got, was got, <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. So ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope that I've sort of covered the features that you wanted me to cover, how you start the car, what it's like to drive, is it fun, what do I think of it, my final impressions, and also would I buy this as the second car. And you know what? If it was maybe 10, 15 grand less, I think that's where this car is gonna sit in a few years. I think this car is going to depreciate to around 70, maybe even 60,000 pounds. And buying it at 85,000 pounds, you've got that 15, or well, I'll, I'll have that 15 grand gap to lose, which um, isn't really costs that I want to incur just yet. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video and um, have enjoyed all of my vi previous videos. If you've watched them, if you haven't, then please subscribe to Supercars of London if you're new um, because there's so much more cool content to come. And hopefully this is the beginning of many, many cool cars to ha for me to have. And um, yeah, I really, really thank you for all of your support. It's truly sort of overwhelming. We hit 100 million, oh, 100 million views, over 200,000 subscribers. 100,000 uh, followers on my personal Instagram page now, which is just mind-blowing. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, guys. I will see you tomorrow. I've come across these guys on Instagram. They tagged me in a picture um, of their Bicolori, this one here, and said, how does this tick?